What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a very exciting day for me because I get to review another Zod plane and I just got the Nano Talon Black Ops Edition that you see in the front of the screen right there. And the original one is in the far back side, uh, sent to me from Banggood. So thanks to Banggood for sending me out that. We could compare both of these planes, but they're virtually the same except for one thing. We have Copilot and uh, now we have Black EPP on the Black Ops one. So you get to choose whether you like that white version or the black version, they're both available now. And the neatest thing about this plane, if you've never seen this plane before, this is all plug and play here. The wings snap on, there's a carbon spar that goes laterally across through the fuselage and you just slide the wings on the spar and they lock into place. In the very back, the tail comes off and on by magnets. They just snap into place as well. And they have control surfaces that are carbon spars that go down into the fuselage to the servo running to the front of the plane. So it's a really nice original type of setup. And it's, it's amazing because the servos aren't out on the wing. They're actually all in the fuselage, which is great. It, it simplifies these types of design a lot. So you don't have uh, any servos hanging out on the edge of the wing, which is great. So uh, no wires running out on the wings. It's just all control rods running through there. Now, this plane does not have flaps. It has ailerons and a V-tail on there. And they also have the co-pilot sitting over there to the left on the left-hand side of your screen, which is a plug-and-play GPS unit. And I've been talking to Zod and other companies about this for our fixed wing aircraft for quite some time. I feel like having a flight controller and GPS with different flight modes on a fixed wing just makes it so much easier for the user. And Zod took the challenge to make this system without you having to plug it into iNav or Betaflight. So there is no computer needed at all on this setup. This is supposed to be something that you can put in the airplane and have GPS return to home on a switch. You will have to set up your mode switch on, I believe it was channel five, right after the four channels that are required for flying the airplane. So uh, in your Tyrannus, just go ahead and make a switch active, whichever switch you want on your radio, three position switch required for this because you have three flight modes on co-pilot. The first one is gonna be return to home. That's the, the stick all the way up and away from you. The second mode is going to be, uh, I believe it was a manual mode, and then all the way down was gonna be stability mode. So you can choose from any of those flight modes. I took off in manual mode first with this uh, little plane and almost crashed it because I didn't put any expo in there. And uh, it's really, really fast with the six by three prop on the back. Um, but what you want to do is stand up on an elevated hill and launch this from a little bit of an elevation. That way when the, the nose of the plane dips down, you don't kind of biff it into the ground. Uh, I did have some launching difficulty with mine in the very beginning of this review because I did a kind of a, a beginner type mistake. I forgot to put the carbon spar through the wing. Um, I got so excited I just plugged the wings in. They felt really flimsy. I put a little tape on them and they folded anyway. Um, so I was, I was really, really excited to get this plane up in the air with the co-pilot and uh, I suffered that consequence. But once the carbon spar was through the wing, I was good. Um, but they do say in the manual that when you're setting up the co-pilot, you don't have to put any mix into this plane You uh, in your radio. You just set it up like a regular T-tail when you're setting up the plane, like a regular standard airplane setup inside your radio um, so that you, you don't have any V-tail mix. It says that the flight controller does it for you, and it does do it for you. It actually has three different settings in co-pilot. So you have the T-tail setup, you have V-tail, and I believe you had Elevon set up for um, any type of delta wing. So uh, when I set my co-pilot to the original setting for V-tail, no matter what we did, it seemed that it wasn't working correctly. The servos were acting independently. So when I would move the elevator, only one side would move, and that's a problem. And when I would move the uh, rudder, the other side would move. So that, that's a, that was an issue for me. So it seems like either we did it wrong or the setting for the V-tail on the flight controller, there's a little tiny uh, controller inside there that comes off of the flight controller. And you should be able to select the type of plane, the aircraft that you have set up on here. Well, um, that was an issue 
because the V-tail setup, it seemed, was not working for the plane. Um, so either they have something labeled wrong or something's going on there. But when I switched over to T-tail on the flight controller module, then everything came into play and the servos started working together, bringing elevator up at the same time like you should. You should see both of these services come up at the same time, yeah? And back down for nose down. Uh, rudder would be left and right. And finally, after I selected T-tail, that is, uh, uh, might be an issue out there for, maybe for the prototypes that I got, but the full retail version hopefully doesn't have that quirk in there. And um, maybe the guys are talking about it on the forums over on Facebook or RC groups, but that was an issue for me. And it took us a couple hours because mainly guys, you have a problem there with, when that occurs, you have a problem because you can't mix it in the radio you have to understand that if you mix it in the radio, when your plane goes into RTL, it's going to revert back to what it thinks is level. Um, so your plane in stability mode, when you move it back and forth, uh, all your control services coming from your radio have to be correct and vice versa. So if, if one is different than the other, say you put a mix into your radio and all your surfaces turned right, but then you put it in stability mode and everything is wonky going the wrong direction, uh, that's going to be a problem for the flight controller when it goes into return to home um, because you'll have an immediate crash. And that's very dangerous. So don't, um, don't put any mixes into your radio until you have stability mode working correctly and the flight controller knows the directions that your servos need to travel for stability because... Um, very important again make sure that your stability mode works left right up and down to keep the plane level because when rtl kicks in it relies on that uh, type of orientation for the control surfaces you're following me so in the radio after all of that is level say you had one servo backwards you could still go back and move the weight to the other side or move the uh the the servo direction back the other way and that happened to us we had two servos in our setup that was, were backwards after we had stability mode all worked out and everything was plugged in correctly to the flight controller so um, very important after you have stability mode then you could reverse servos and things like that um, otherwise your rtl might not work so be very careful about that and as always guys test out your return to home at the field because this guy will actually return to home at a pretty close distance, uh, which is nice. Some of the other iNav setups out there will drop to the ground inside 150 meters, whereas uh, this one does not do that. I believe the Betaflight setup might also do that. It has uh, a, a sort of a, a radius that it will not uh, return, level out and return to home in. And um, that's that's fortunate that this system does not do that this baby will return to home at any distance when you need it so super cool um, this is also a 33 inch wingspan on this little plane um, and I, I've, I've talked about these motors before the motors and the esc very standard 30 amp esc and that uh, 1870 kv motor is great on here and what's also nice about this plane is that it does have nine gram metal gear servos already installed and for the price I think that's actually a pretty good value on this plane when you're flying long range this thing will go out there like 25 miles there are videos out there that guys are sending this plane out 25 miles or, or more uh, so you know yeah around 40 45 kilometers is really really far out um, but you can also run Lions on here if you want to uh, you can run 18650 packs the 4s1ps at 3500 milliamp and uh, you can experiment around with that if you want to. There's, there's Lion packs out there that are pre-built these days at around this type of spec, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. So uh, 3500 is actually, uh, I believe there's one company out there, you might have to look up Zoe FPV. I think she has some 3500 or 3000 milliamp Lion packs available. And I think those are called Outcasts. So check those out. Those might work up, uh, work with your, your Nano talon black ops or the original version but uh let's go ahead and go out and fly guys gave you a kind of an introduction um, fairly long-winded introduction to the nano talon black ops uh, mainly because 
super excited about this plane and it's super, super dope. And one of the most portable long range FPV planes on the planet. And one of the community favorites out there too. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some flying. We'll do a little bit of line of sight. We'll do some FPV with it. And uh, I'll also show you the new Foxeer Falcor. And we're running an AKK transmitter as well with the Luminar AX2 two on there also for my secondary setup uh, we we are also we are running the co-pilot on board uh, also so um, i had some issues with the vc400 as far as my uh, durability durability was compromised on my vc400 the front of my camera broke off after like the first um, nose dive so uh, unfortunately my vc400 went out and the good news is that you get to check out what the, the new Falcor looks like. So let's go head outside now. Let's do a little bit of flying and uh, have some fun with this one. Here we go. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do the flight test now. You can see my Foxeer display at the very bottom, and I'm not even at a full charge on this battery, but we're going to get 10 minutes out of this battery anyway. So with a fully charged 4S 1550 from Tattoo, I think you can get like 15 minutes flight time. So uh, when you back off the throttle, the battery level will come up just a little bit, but I have this camera directly wired to the power system. There's a little bit of kind of diagonal lines, but uh, if I had a, a video filter on there as an LC filter, that would clear all that up in between the power source and the camera. However, today I only have the battery telemetry and my timer on the bottom right, but here's the thing. The other one, the VC400, has 400 milliwatt, and that's great, um, but since that one took a nosedive and broke preemptively, I'm only missing a few things on the OSD right here. I'm only missing the power output on the VTX from the VC400, and we're missing the channel and um, the band that we're on. So I, I'm not totally out of luck here. I also have a very simple mode setup on the switch, which is really nice. So at the very top, I'd be in RTL. At the middle position, I'll be in uh, our manual mode. And at the bottom, stability. So three flight modes, pretty easy to remember. It's not like iNav where I have a bunch of switches set up. So right now we're just cruising and check out the AKK transmitter. This is a good example of how awesome the AKK transmitter is. A lot of guys out there use the AKK 1 watt and the 2 watt. They even have a 2 watt available uh, on 5.8. So man, you could go for 4 miles out on the, the 2 watt or more, it seems like. Even on 5.8, that's kind of crazy. Um, but with this one, we're just kind of field testing it today and seeing if I can get this to fail safe on the XM Plus receiver it's a full range receiver but i'm actually able to get pretty far out there in the field so this is looking pretty good here uh we're right now we're, we're locked into return to home and you can see the throttle increase just a little bit there's a little bit more bounce once you do that you see the sort of lateral bounce that we have going on here uh, and that's kind of a characteristic of this plane at, at high throttles there's a little bit of wing bounce um, so this plane likes to cruise about, I'd say about 40% throttle, which is actually really good for long range type of setups. Um, and I believe this RTL throttle might be over 50%. And what it does is it's going to fly straight back to the field where I took off from. And it has about, I'd say about a 20 meter radius around the home point, And it's going to start to go into uh, what we call a loiter loiter mode so most of you guys that are already flying long range are familiar with that but the new guys that are just getting on board with fpv and you're wanting some type of plane with return to home on there and this is what this plane does and it's just going to sit there and circle and it'll circle all day long until you switch it out of this mode um, good in one way where if you just needed to get your plane back and you had no control but you could just wait for the battery to run out and it would pretty much glide down and crash somewhere lightly hopefully not in one of these super tall trees over there or you can just switch out of it if you have control and hopefully when you get it back to your home field that it is back under your radios control but in a, in a normal typical return to home situation the plane will actually climb up to about 150 feet or so and start its return 
right now I'm playing with stability mode. You can see there's a little bit of bounce there and I just switched into manual mode now. So now see how fluid everything is. It really gets nice and fluid when you switch out of stability mode. I, I'm not a big fan of stability mode because when I fly it, it's it feels like someone's holding on to the steering wheel. It's kind of like uh, driver's ed if your, your teacher had a hand on the wheel. But uh, flying in manual mode, I'm able to cut back to about 40% throttle like this. And even though this is like a flat wing type of plane, you can really slow it down and get in there. It almost has like zero stall capability. And normally I wouldn't put a plane in this close to this little um, ravine through here. This little stream is pretty treacherous. There's a lot of branches sticking up left and right that you probably can't see in the, the FPV view. And the Falcor is pretty good. There's no color editing on here, anything to sweeten up this color of this camera. It's a cloudy day, and it was not the best day to test this, but it actually has a pretty nice camera view for the cloudy day. So Pacific Northwest, guys, the Falcor is, is a local favorite because it makes that cloudy day look like a sunny day. And all the green looks nice and green, super green over there in the grass. So I'm just tucking in here nice and tight. We come around this line of little mini Christmas trees right there and back over and I'm still flying in manual just showing you guys what it flies like in manual mode still at 14 volts and we had about a minute on there when uh, we started this flight so it's about five minutes at this point and I, I gave the GPS a minute to load up this timer will start as soon as you plug in a battery so I'm gonna dive these trees right here check out this vertical dive a little bit of breakup behind those evergreens now we're gonna come out here and check out this big farmers field and the coolest thing about this is that when you install something like the copilot on any type of airplane I mean it doesn't even have to be this particular nano talon black ops it can be any plane you could put this on one of those Voluntex Rangers and do the same thing. All you have to be able to do is plug in servos. Now I don't know that this system works with any bigger servos than 9 gram servos so I'd be cautious plugging in some 12 gram servos into this system. I'd probably stick to 9 gram servos or smaller on this flight controller. I think anything else it might be drawing too many volts. We would have to uh, ask Zod about that, maybe email them. But this system is, is perfect for smaller planes, and there I go, manual barrel roll. The, the flight controller is not very big, and then that's really nice for you guys if you want to add it on even some of the smallest Banggood planes out there. And now I'm back into that RTL, and look at this thing hauling butt home. I mean, it is like made me almost a little bit sick in my FPV goggles looking at this. I was about to toss my cookies right here. Uh, and it is, and it's it's got to be above 50% throttle in this RTL, or the RTH. RTL's return to land, we're returning to home, and then we're going to... And there it slowed down. It slowed down because it got to its loiter point, and it didn't do that the last time that we tested their return to, to home. A little bit of bounce there on the cornering but it'll start, sit here in circle. So it's great. The The modes work really well. The return to home never failed on me. And we can also test it again if you guys want to. I'm just letting it roll here. It's still in. Now I just switched it out. Now we're back into manual mode. And I'm going to fly the, the plane out here. Uh, let's, let's go out to the right side of the field over here. And let's see how the return to home works from down low. Oh, I seem to have aborted that mission. I tested the plane down low just to see if it would gain altitude really fast and come back up to around 150 feet. And I did test that and it does work. So here I'm just slowing the plane down, trying to see if I can make this to tree gaps just barely right there. Kind of an example of some close tight end proximity type flying you can get away with this plane right there it's back in stability mode bouncing around a little bit 
and that seems to be the characteristic in stability mode but for the new guys stability mode is like foolproof because you just press your throttle stick and push your right stick left and right and it does all the stabilization for you um, starting out in manual mode I'm gonna I, I would have to say that you might want to put like 20% expo into your setup maybe just soften it a little bit you could also dial back the controls uh, the travel distance on the servos you could dial those back just a little bit so that you had about half of the control surface travel and that will also soften up the controls for you a little bit of travel limit and expo helps a lot but look at this I'm able to really get down in this road and you guys have seen me fly this road with planes before and I normally don't get quite this low with planes through here and I'm just cruising in manual mode it's a really smooth flying plane with that motor on the back super low KV not crazy powerful it's not a race like anything like a race wing or anything but it'll get in there it's pretty fun to fly so proximity or long range with the co-pilot or put any other type of flight controller in here like a Maytech and any of the BN series GPS's and you you can have quite a lot of fun with the Nano Talon most of the guys that I know have at least one of these mainly because they're so cheap and they they really do break down and they're they're perfect because people are looking for a plane they can stick in a backpack take on a plane on a trip and the Nano Talon happens to be that plane so um, very very high marks on this plane and pretty decent marks on the uh, the co-pilot autopilot GPS system work flawless for me so let's go ahead back in the studio guys and uh, I'm going to continue my stoke on this new product from Zod. It's pretty sweet. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's open up the box really quickly. And let me show you how simple this is. You've got your Copilot light flight controller here. You want to go ahead and take the little foam pad, sticky pad, and stick it on the bottom just like I have here. And this will go inside the aircraft. We have actually a pretty simple layout here we have GPS over here and there's a cable in the box it just comes out straight to the GPS right here it plugs into the bottom port of the GPS and they're running the BN 220 this will give you up to about 19 to 20 satellites uh, on GLONASS which is pretty cool and again you don't have to do any GPS configuration inside iNav um, to get your GPS working some of the biggest headaches out there for iNav new guys is getting the GPS to actually lock in and make a lock and start receiving packets so uh, this is plug and play again and we have PWM here we have the settings port right here that's gonna go to your settings configurator back here for changing your different aircraft setup types uh, as well as return to home and the return to home option is over here on the far right and the settings for this is inside the manual you have a set button here and the port for plugging in the cable and I just leave this hooked up I put it inside the fuselage and I VHB it down to a particular spot where I can get to it and I can see it and you have also LEDs on the inside here for showing your flight modes whether you're in return to home or not and it's also nice that most of this is nice and solid feeling it is kind of an aluminum top plate here gives it a little bit of protection and they have these nice mounting points here as well so if you don't want to stick it down with the 3m sticky tape you can actually just mount it with some posts so a traditional type setup either or now further inside the box on the bottom level we have our cables and we have a screwdriver for changing those settings on the controller which is cool we also have a Zod sticker in here, which I love these Zod stickers. I have tons of those. And we have the manual here. And the manual is, eh, the manual's okay. The manual could be better. Uh, but this is the flight aircraft settings that I was talking about. Flying wing here for ailerons. Um, and we have V-tail and T-tail right here. And it only worked for V-tail when I selected T-tail. So um, that's hopefully going to help you guys out trying to set yours up. 
So we have GPS LED status table here and the configuration for setting up which type of aircraft works like this. You have your GPS to the far left right here and that's either going to be red or green. You have uh, a constant on green will be a fix. So that's the way that's going to work. GPS not fixed is going to blink and it's constantly off. Um, is going to be GPS not connected at all. So uh, those are the three statuses for the GPS. But the plane configuration is where some people get confused. And this is the way that this works. The far right hand two LEDs on the far right over here are green. And they work in conjunction as follows. Consistently on for LED one, which is the one in the very middle. So on and off here, that says that the V-tail is set up. So uh, middle one on, the right hand off. That's for your V-tail. Now the next setting for T-tail, which is what I had to select, is the first LED will all be off and the next one over will be on. So that's what I had to select to get my V-tail working is T-tail. Uh, constant on for delta wing in the middle and constant on to the far right. So both on to the far right and the middle for your delta or flying wing setups. So yeah, that's a little bit confusing for uh, a lot of people out there, but you don't have to use a computer. And if you can just figure this out for the first time, it is actually pretty simple, um, but not simple that you had to select T-tail to get your V-tail working. So uh, maybe something is mislabeled there in the manual, but your cables are here. And I wanna show you how quickly this sets up. This is the quickest flight controller setup out there in the universe right now. So. Um, this is the PWM cable if you were going to use this to plug this into PWM, but we're not going to use this. You don't have to. We're going to take the settings controller cable here. This is the larger cable and the pins are on the outside all the way to the outside. Make sure you have those lined up. Just uh, gently push those in. You don't want to force anything in this hobby because that's when we break stuff. And now pins down here for your controller. Now the GPS pins all the way out on the flight controller here. And this is pretty much, again, the quickest setup I think I've ever done on any type of fixed wing aircraft with GPS. This is what we've been waiting for. I would say it's not perfect by any means, but it will get your plane home, which is the good news. So now everything is wired up here for the exception of the servos. and. Um, you're just going to have to play around with the servos. Uh, make sure that you plug in your throttle servo. It's going to be your ESC servo link, right? So you're going to plug that into your ESC. And that's going to be, um, I believe it was on channel 3, if I'm not mistaken, inside the Tyrannus. And then we have an aux port at the very top. We have rudder, elevator, aileron, and S-bus at the very bottom. So your S-bus will plug in right there to your, say, your XM Plus receiver. But overall, very simple and easy to use and fairly straightforward uh, for the exception of that one um, mode setup for the aircraft type. But uh, a really, a really a great start for something super simple. And make sure that your arrow is pointing forward to the front of the aircraft when you install it. And then after you do this type of setup, you're pretty much ready to go and do your first flight tests. All right, guys two very awesome aircraft sitting here and with the addition of Zod's Copilot Light, that makes everything super plug and play for you guys. It did have some issues and some bugs that I worked out with the system. Uh, maybe it was the prototype that I got that, that had an issue uh, with the type of aircraft selected, but um, yeah, once I set it to T-tail, everything was good. So um, again, maybe it was labeled wrong or something was uh, going on there. Um, now my second uh, opinion on this type of setup, we gotta talk about pros and cons here. The VC400 all-in-one camera system, it's kind of based on a, an AIO camera that has very low resolution. It is 400 milliwatt, it's rocking 400 milliwatt, which is great, uh, which will get you pretty far out there. VC400 will, will go out a mile and a half to two miles, I bet, on 400. Um, but the thing is, is that it's it's the camera should be better, and um, I'm hoping that they they can upgrade this camera in future versions. And also, I'd like to see that 
Probably a Copilot full-blown version would be able to integrate iNav. If you had the option to switch between Zod's firmware and then go to iNav, that would probably be much better for the community. But again, this product, the light version, is just uh, targeted at guys that, that want to be able to plug everything in and just um, have it work with GPS return to home. And that's what this is. For the $45 price point, that's awesome for entry level GPS return to home functions, uh, stability and manual mode. So I think it's kind of a win for those guys that don't want to have to use their computer and use iNav because iNav can get super complicated. You don't have to do any of that here. So uh, I think that's pretty awesome for ease of use and um, the price point. So uh, I think that's kind of a win-win where I think as the, the VC400 is not the greatest camera in the world and mine did break on me really easily so um, you want to make sure you put that inside your fuselage and give it plenty of protection and not riding on top because your first rollover with the plane is going to break that camera uh, not the most durable camera in the world and again there are much better cameras out there so what I really think is cool about the Nano Talons is that you can get the original Nano Talon for around $100 you can get the FPV ready one with everything you need for FPV and a VTX on there for around, I believe it's around $160. And you can get the new Black Ops one um, as well with Copilot and have everything you want on there, just plug and play. So I think they have a pretty good setup here and Zod's on the right track right now. And hopefully they do that new version with plug and play FPV options straight to the flight controller instead of a bypass power switch. I think that would be really, really super awesome for the FPV community. Uh, that would be a little bit more expensive, but a lot of fun for us. So this is where it's at right now. Plug and play, very user-friendly type of flight controller and GPS. And actually the, the modes work flawless. Again, I'm, I'm impressed with the flight modes on here and the way they work out with the Black Ops Talon. So I'm going to go ahead and end this review and we're going to give it about a 4.6 for everything here for the new Black Ops version of the Nano Talon and the Copilot Lite. The first, the version 1 edition of their flight controller with the GPS and flight modes. Pretty cool. So pick one up, 45 bucks. Not a bad system and uh, not super hard to set up and get returned to home on any fixed wing out there on the planet. You can put this on any fixed wing not just the Black Ops Nano Talon. So thanks again for watching my reviews, guys. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.